What's happening, guys? So, something a little bit different. I'll be leading the questions to this big beast. There's a lot to talk about today. Obviously, we've chatted a little bit about Tom's injury. We just put that video out. You're not doing Glasgow. So, we're going to talk about that. There's some really big changes. We've got a coaching update as well. We're going to delve into that, which is, which is a huge change. So, really exciting. A lot of stuff coming up. Obviously, first things first, we were supposed to obviously both be competing in Glasgow. Um, you've had to pull out. You touched base in the injury. Is it going okay? You're feeling, feeling mentally okay you know, after having to pull out of Glasgow. I know it's a big... You're the reigning champion. But how do you feel? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, post Vegas, I mean, mentally I was a bit down because when you get told you have it, when you get told you don't actually have an injury, I didn't really know what it was. You get told you have weak glutes, you have weak this, you have weak that, or... You know, and then when you look back on previous performances and stuff and, like, deadlifts didn't improve and other things haven't improved, um, you just think, like, what's happening? So, yeah, I mean, coming home from Vegas, hard one, didn't not train for a wee while, and then I just needed to contact someone that was a specialist that would touch on later on, but I contacted this guy that helps with prehab and rehab, and he's a coach as well, and, yeah, I, so I, my, it's my, one of, it's my uh, disc in the back and some nerves on my right side of my body that's been giving me a lot of problems the last uh, six or seven months I've just been not training smart and kind of you know I've not had a specialist to be able to point me on how to train around the injuries and stuff so yeah I pulled out of Glasgow for that reason I'm not going down to Glasgow if I'm not 100% I'm the reigning champion and yeah it's disrespectful of myself to go down there at 60-70% and if I you know, a lot of fans will be like oh it's fine if you come for for six yeah it's fine for them but for me it's if i come for for six my head goes again and then it, it's a domino effect the whole time so i'm gonna be there for me you're, you're gonna be there yes yeah. i'm gonna be i think for, i think as well like fans always want to see athletes compete but i think it's just a special if you're there and i mean it means one i'm going to be meeting more than just vip fans i'm going to be meeting a lot of other people you know outside the arena in the arena um you know, I won't need get needed for like the athletes uh, kind of meetings and stuff. So I'll be mixing around with much more fans than I would be if I was competing. So yeah, it would be nice to see me compete. But I'm going to be there supporting Luke and the other guys. And you're going to get much more of my time in the crowd, VIP and all that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, um, I'm still going to be there, which is going to be good. But I'm not. I'm just. I need to protect myself now, and I can't just be saying yes to competition and yes just to keep people happy. I need to make sure. I'm in a good headspace and I know it's right, the right decision for me and I know this is the right decision. So good. So you're going to be there. You're going to be my bad bitch again, which will be nice. I love it when Tom's there just supporting me, breathing deeply in the back of my shoulder. Because I'm out of breath. Um, so let, let's go over the events quickly. So um, there's five events in Glasgow, uh, the World Tour Finals. So there's the Dumble Medley, Deadlift for X, Axel Deadlift for X, Yoke Carry into Farmers, Hercules Hold, and Castle Stones, yeah, here's the ones. Oh, I've cracked a little bit of tin of the end. Um, I'm bored of them already. Um, so the Dumbo made, I think it's 80 to 120. Um, Deadlift for it, I think it's 350. Yoke Carry, uh, I thought it was 1,000, I don't know, it's right in 450, or whatever it is, Farmers. Um, I think it's Farmers Walk into Yoke Carry, actually. It is. Um, Hercules Hold, who cares? Um, Castle Stones is the heavy ones. So, um, you know, those events are I'll probably, for me, they're more suited um, in terms of uh, Vegas. I don't think the Vegas events were that great for me, but they're okay. Deadlift, Dumble Medley, confident with that. Deadlift for X will do okay in that. Farmers and Diop, that's quite a good event for me. Hercules Hold, uh, Castle Stones is okay. So I'm coming down, I want to get podium in Glasgow, that's my aim. And that's that. So do you think I can do it? 100%. Good. Um, yeah. 100% you're going to get the podium in Glasgow. I think that's in this choice, if you, um, you know, if we're, if we're both in it, I was obviously going to go for a win because I'm any champion, but if we, if you can't get the podium in this, you know, you get fired up. In this show as well, the, I mean, the people that have not seen it, the fans are mental. You know, it's, a, it's a home uh, home kind of ground as well. So, yeah, Luke's going to be fired up for this. So, um, fired up, ready to go. So that'll be really good. But with in terms of training, we're going to touch on this next. So we've got the events for the Rogue Invitational. So the Rogue Invitational um, is middle November, November 13th, around those that time. So for my training going into Glasgow, I'm actually not stopping training for it. So all my my training, we're lucky if we're going to go into events, but the events for Rogue is similar to Glasgow. So I'm going to be doing my last session, I think it is on Wednesday next week. Um, but I know, like with a deal, 
get, we'll get onto this a little bit more as well with your new training format, but when you've been doing the conditioning stuff, you're feeling fitter, your body recovers a lot better. So that, for me, I'm feeling really good. I was training a couple of days after I got back from Vegas, feeling yeah, just as good as I've, I've ever felt. So really excited for that. So let's go into the biggest comp, one of the biggest comps of the year, the Rogue Invitational, which is going to be in Aberdeen, Scotland. Aberdeen! <laughs> Aberdeen, now the sheep go back a jelly bean. So we just actually had... Um, JP up for Rogue filming with us for the road to the Rogue Invitational, which was really cool. So, huge thank you to Rogue for sending out JP who's class. Hope you guys enjoy it. I think it's that'll be out soon, if not now. Um, so anyway, so events. Let's let's chat about the events. So we're competing for two days. Yep. I'll go through day one, and you tell me about what you feel, right? So day one, event one, is the deadlift raw for Max. So no suit or no figure of eights, that's fine. Event number two is farmer's carry into log press for Rex. So I think the farmer's is 160 kilos into 170 kilo log, so it's for three reps and the fastest time wins. Then event number three, which we've done before, is the inverse stones um, onto the barrel. So there's five stones, 125, 135, 165, 180, and a monster 190. So that is day one. So talk to me, Big Tommy. What are we saying? What's your raw deadlift going to be? Uh, it's it's going to be. I mean, this is where it's. This is where this is the decision I made for Glasgow. So um, obviously, uh, I made a decision of not doing Glasgow. I wasn't going to do Rogue either, but I thought, you know, I've got about six weeks to go with this guy. And the guy said to me, you know, it's it's be realistic. It's like I'm gonna I want to go into this competition where. I'm improving on the deadlift and have no pain, and that's that's the kind of goal for myself. And obviously, my match deadlift has been, you know, I'm supposed to clap this year for, for obviously reasons that I just thought I was weak, but it's obviously because of an injury. And uh, that you know, I've had the talk with him, my, my the new, new guy that I'll talk about later on as well, and <coughs> he just said, you know, we need to take it, we need to strip it back down and take it back to basics and really kind of get get everything get everything moving again and stuff. And you know, he was so scientific about the injury I've got in the disc and like something about water and all, it was crazy what he was talking about but I'm not really going to repeat it because I'll make it look like this, like it's gibberish anyway so talk about it sorry sorry sorry, sorry. we don't want to hear science we want to hear big numbers what was it um, 505 raw deadlift <laughs> now my, my goal is just to pull over 420 and um, that's, that's, that's the goal I mean like I said if we can uh yeah, I'm using Rogue again as a as a base to see how I'm going to be getting on with all the new stuff I'm going to be doing. So, in all honesty, the deadlift is going to be an unknown for myself. Let's just see how it goes in training. I know I'm stripping it right back anyway, so we'll see how it goes. But I just want to go in there, be able to recover after the deadlift and not uh, and not being sore either, and actually have a pull of good good uh, make my um, sorry good England. <laughs> And hopefully it's a good raw pull, setting out 420. So actually looking at day one as well, it's quite lower back heavy. Yes. We're quite hamstring, lower back glute heavy. So, you know, that's where your injury is. But if we can get through, if you can get through day one, getting good points, which I think you will, I think your mindset is going to be a lot different going into the Rogue. Um, you finished second there before. Twice. Twice. So the deadlift. So you're, you're saying, you know, if you can hit around 420 raw, I think that'd be a fantastic pull. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, like I said, all those, I think at 100% I can hit more than that, but again, it's at, like, again, this is a new, uh, when everything's new to me, I can't really say put it on but 420 minimum is, is going to have to be the goal for myself too, for improvements, 420 minimum has to be my goal. So, okay, so an event to... Event to farmers carry into low press, I mean, log for me is fine. Um, the good thing about it, my upper body's not affected too much, but I mean, there's a, a wee bit of that hinge position when I'm cleaning and stuff, but that gets all sort of farmers again. Um, it's, yeah, that's going to be fine. It's just, again, we're going to be doing like we're doing the deadlift, just restripping it all down, making sure um, my lower back's protected, just not over kind of training it all and stuff. But I'm going to, yeah, farmers carry into log press is going to be a good one. 170 log and a... Uh, like a 160, 160 farmer. It's only for 12 metres of yeah. average. So it's going to be a fast event. I think I'm going to also wear my lifters this time as well, just get practice into them because, yeah, you, you probably lose more points to, in log if you wear the wrong, wrong uh, footwear, sorry, and you're unbalanced and stuff. So I think the farmers, 
to me looking at it, because it's such a short distance, and the 165er is, isn't overly heavy. I, I could really jinx myself by saying this, but it should just be, it's just a speed event. It's like, boom, 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 sh straight into the 170 log, grab it, quit yeah. it, bag it up. Like, that's got to be quick. That's going to be really quick, that event, which I think we're, we're really good at. We're very good at that transition. Um, really excited for that first two events. Um, event number three, Inverse stones, so it's no tacky, no tacky. You know the tacky towel. I've done these once, and they were they were they were hard. I mean, like people think they're the same as that. The stone, that stone, they're they're, they're hard stones. I mean, after the two events we've done in the foot before, and again, with the inverse stones, you can go quite fast in the first two. But yeah, it's going to be good. But I'm planning to get all of them, of course. But mm. a one mighty inverse stone is a is a is a big mouthful, fault. So it's going to be good. It's going to be tough, but it'll be a. You know, that's the last event of the day, so you can kind of go empty the tank and just leave everything out there. So, are you going to show, and again, this is a new coaching aspect, but with the, we've got a stone of steel in the gym. Are you going to probably use that? Do you think you utilize that? Yeah, I think that's I think that's the key. I think um, there's no point using, like, at the stones because it's got the tacky, like, yeah. tacky and stuff, but you need something like that. And I think also making that, even putting a wee bit of, like, when your sweat gets on this, at the stone of steel as well, just to make it uncomfortable because you're going to be sweating on stones like that and you're not... Tacky towels are good, but they're not end of the world. They still don't really stick too well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that'll that be... So that's uh, that's day one. Um, so there's three events, as as we said. There's Deadlift from Max, Farber's Carry into Log Press and the English Stones. English Stones. So I think that could be a really good day. Like, personally, I feel good going into... I want to get Glasgow, obviously, out of the way. Um, but excited to get back to training hard with you, big chap. Um, oh my god, it looks dumb and excited for me. Oost, yeah, kill that, son. Big boys are coming. Stolen Brothers, let's go, baby. Big Tommy's back, new mindset, new motivation, some new other stuff that we're going to talk about. So again, keep listening, because there is a huge announcement. You could maybe have guessed it. I, I got it. Thank you, Harry Bulls. It's something that we've been... Like, let's get... Anyway, okay. okay. Event four, day... No, day two. Day two, event four. Oh. I just did. They should do. I'll do the day two. All right. Okay. You ask me then. I saw you do. I don't. You do. I just do the fog. Sorry. Uh, day two. Oh, guys, please tell me. Sorry. Um. So event number four. We're opening up with the grueler. It is the power drive. So it's push. So we're pushing an implement. So it's like a sled push. Rogue have made some mad thing. It's similar to the wheel of pain. Um, so we're going to be pushing something and then we're going to be carrying a Husafel sandbag. I think it's 170 kilos. Um, and then we're going to be pulling a sled pull back. Um, so it's pretty brutal. Um, but I think it's only, it's like six meter, six meter, 12 meter. It's like the description of this, right? Large battle with sand, feel like wheels of pain, push hay bale. Push hay bale. Is that what it was said? Does that, did you say that? Copied it. Copied. Yeah. So that's what our description. So that was a rogue saying, push a hay bale. So any farmers out there, uh, we need a hay bale for you. We used to push hay bales when we were younger. I did. And then used to get chased by the farmer telling us to politely put them back. Uh, uh, yeah, this could be an interesting event. I think it's it's not as a, the course ain't that big. And um, we know we've done Wheel of Pain before. We've done a lot of uh, pushing events, which you'll get lactic acid. So I think it's going to be an actual you know, event. I think uh, the Saturday, I think the... The second part of it's gonna be the the, carry. the easiest part, I think, there's this this what's it called? The Husserville. Husserville, because we're used to twenty, forty, sixty meters, so six meters isn't a long ago. I think that's a lot of it's gonna be a, a really fast event as well. It's fast, fast, yeah, fast. This, this, this is where the conditioning comes in. Yeah. This is where like you need to be fully on it for that full event. Like we can't you can't stop. You can't you know There's a minute and a half or whatever it is of pain just, just keeps it going. Just smash it. So this, I think this is again looking at this. This is a really good event. I'm really excited. There's something different as well, isn't it? It's not like your standard kind of whatever. It's, it's a little bit different, and there's a few implements uh, to the event. So I think when that comes in, we usually do pretty well. So that's event number four. So it'll be a good one. Then we got number five. Event number five, which is the yolk carry into power steers and the yoke I think is about 400 kilos so I don't think the yoke's gonna it's almost a non it's, 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 it's not a heavy implement for us 
on his power style, you've seen a lot of power uh, thing. Uh, you see a lot of um, like yokes or things into power stairs now as well, which is good. So uh, yeah, power stairs a very good event for myself. Good thing about this as well, it's only three weights, so there's only four stairs. So yeah. it again, power stairs. This is going to be fast because. I mean, I've done it at the shop class and stuff, and that's ridiculous how heavy it is. So, um, and then yeah, yoke carry again is going to be fast. So it's all about the transition and just straight onto the power stairs and just bam, 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 bam. So I think I think the heaviest one is two seventy. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite it's a heavy enough one. Heavy, but there's only four stairs, so and there's only three weights. And it's not overly high. It's yeah, twelve inches. And I don't think yoke burns you out as much as no. other 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 events do as well. So it's quite a you, know, you get to save your hands, you get to save a lot of your yeah. kind of stuff that you need to you know. Whereas other things, other events will burn you out. And hopefully we'll have our power stairs. We're getting a set of power stairs made up. Fingers crossed. Hopefully this week it'll be done. It's too dodgy just doing it up onto a box and trying to take it back. That's not the best. So yeah, hopefully that'll be done. Um, shout out to Ross Ryan Engineering. Oh, I know. Get it done, we may now. Oh, I'm Beanie. Get a finger out, boy. Get back on the tools if you have to, mate. Um, so yeah, that'll be a good one. Thank you to Ross Ryan engineering for having us in the warehouse making this equipment it's amazing so i'm um, really excited to get that and really get kind of prepping for that one so that is the fifth that is the the second last event the final event at the rogue invitational 2024 is a press medley which is pretty cool so you might have seen us with a giant kettlebell recently over the last couple of weeks so there's a kettlebell press there's a sheer dumbbell press and a circus axle press for two reps. So the kettlebell is 92 kilos, sheer dumbbell is 115, the axle is 170, and then the last axle is 185 kilos. So it's a heavy one. It's not like a light press medley. You know, they could have done 60 kilo kettlebell, 100 kilo dumbbell, you know, 160, 170, whatever. But it's a heavy one. And it's the final one of the day. We've had two pressing, say, uh, pressing in this one. Um, so I'm quite excited with that. Yeah, I'm confident in this. I, I love it. But I always seem to, with press medleys, perform very well at them. It doesn't matter like kind of how heavy or what implements are. I think for me, if we're looking back at the show, that was my best performance at the show. And that was ridiculously heavy. And I think, yeah, I think like the kettlebell was heavy. As, but I think... The kettlebell is not going to take too much out of you. Me and have been practicing the cleans, and when you get it perfect, it's, it's an easy one. Dumbbell as well doesn't take much out of you if you get it perfect, so it's not like there's log and stuff. So the two axles, you'll have a lot more time on, but yeah, I think that's doable for everyone. I think it's going to be, again, a fast one, because I think the first two are going to be, and honestly, pretty easy, and the first axle is going to be quite easy, but then it's all about what you do for the last one. But yeah, I'm confident. I love axle press as well. It's one of my favourite things. I performed very good on it in the past, so... Those things are going to, I'm very excited for them. So that is, that is all the events. So let the people know what you're thinking, obviously, second last year. Um, what do you think you can do this year? Obviously, there's Mitch, Mitch the Monster, Thor the, the Monster, and all the rest of the guys competing as well. How do you think it'll go, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm just going to, I just want to focus on training, really. I mean, yeah. for myself, it's like, yeah. Yeah, people are talking online and social media and stuff and all go about like Mitch showing for and stuff, but I just want to come in there and you know, shut a lot of people up. I think there's the the new coach, the new thing changing I'm doing is gonna really is really helping me mentally. It's already took a weight off my shoulders, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna go into rogue and I know if I go into rogue with a good mindset and physically feel good, mentally feel good that you know I'm gonna win it. I think I've been close to winning it the last few years. It's been agonizingly close that it's been very annoying, so yeah, I'm going to be happy to go. It's in Aberdeen as well, so I don't have to travel loads. Um, and hopefully with this new guy, he'll get me into a good condition. I mean, I have to realise what, a new guy for six weeks, if he can do a, a job in six weeks, then it's going to be good. But I think he will be. I'm confident in him. I'm motivated, so yeah, let's do it and see what happens. But I'm confident that I'm going to shut a few people up and be on top of that podium. So. Here's a question then. Like, how does it make you feel mentally? So I remember back at Arnold's, no one was talking about you. Like, no one was mentioning you, Tom Stolpen, to get on the podium or to win. Um, this happened again now, obviously, after Shop Classic, Vegas. People are kind of not writing you off. People all know that you've got that talent. But, like, how does it make you feel, like, mentally from that? I, I like it. I mean, like, the only people... I, I think it's the same with Strawman as well. I think there's a lot of people that say, like, 
Astronomy, like, you know, you look to you know, it turns and it's just turns up. But the only people that I've actually stuck to what they said to me is Eddie Hall. I think Eddie Hall, throughout my whole career, has always been supportive for myself. Even half for as well, you know, when that thing happened at Shaw Classic, he's come up to me, he's talked, you know, he said that's happened in his career and stuff, whereas no one other people do. Like, they always just look at, like, Mitch Hood, but he's, he's one of a kind. Whereas even British people, you know, you have British fans that fall out in love with you because you've done two or three things, but I'm the most successful British athlete there is. You have, like, British strongmen as well, you know, saying this, that and that. But, like, at the end of the day, I've, again, I've, imp- I've proved every single person, no one in Britain, no one in, well, no, no other British athlete has done what I've done, which I just take that, So I keep that close to me as well. And if people don't talk to about me, I don't care. Like, because the thing is, if they talk about Mitchell and four and four ends up coming sit for seventh place, then that's fine. But I'm just going into it like I'm winning the Arnold's. And Arnold's, people said to me they was going to get sixth or seventh if I got podium. And, and, you know, and now I'm joined, me and you are the most successful British people at the Arnold. Ah! People forget about that. Look, oh, was, podium first at Arnold. Look at your bad results. So what are you saying? What are you saying to that team? Come on. There's always Come on. every what? single, man, every single competition do. Other strong men out, out the sport always have different opinions. Fans have different opinions. But for me, it's like, do what you want. I've got three World Strongest Man trophies. No other British athletes got that. And it's uh my job. And it's uh, it is what it is. Yeah, I need to improve our competitions. And I've said that one, I've said that for the last few months, I need to improve our competitions, but I can't improve because of the, what's been holding me back, which I didn't realise what was holding me back because I didn't have a specialist to tell me. So now I'm going to be going into competitions. Yeah, if no one wants to talk to me, don't talk about me. I could not give a flying F what people think about me. I'm my own guy. I put Britain on the map, I put Scotland on the map, and uh, I'm trying my best to compete at the highest level possible. Someone's feeling spicy. Yeah, Good. Good. What about, here's one more question. Sorry for the questions. Do you think you can beat the unbeatable Mitch Hooper? I mean, I can beat Mitch Hooper. I beat him this year at Walsh Straws, man. I beat him at Glasgow last year. Um, I beat him at a few other competitions. So I mean, he he's not unbeatable. That's, I mean, you're unbeatable if you go if you join the strongman and go 100% record. That's that's when you're unbeatable. So um, yeah, but I just think there's a few things I need to change, and I don't think I'd ever beat him. I really, really just don't think I could beat him again if I didn't do these changes. And that's that's you know, I was talking truthfully. It's, I have to put. I just be accountable for myself, but I also have to know what's better for myself. And doing this move that I'm going to be doing is better for myself. Or, or, or I'm just going to keep getting mentally drained when I go to competitions. Going to be turning up to competitions, coming fifth for sixth place, which I know I'm better than that, and that's in full frustrating things. So yeah, Mitchell's unbeaten. Half was on. Uh, Mitchell's beatable. Half was beatable. Every single athlete on the planet is beatable. It's just how you do it. And I know how to beat Mitchell Hooper. I've done it in the past. I did it on the biggest stage possible. So I'll be doing that again soon as well. Do you feel, sorry, I'm asking a lot of questions. It's fine. Good. Keep them coming back. You're pumped up. Um, so obviously, you know, motivation comes into a lot, you know, looking at, you know, world's strongest man, you get really motivated for that and it's, it's maybe a bit more difficult to get g that for, for other politicians, but does it feel like you're, you know, with the changes that you've implemented or that you're going to implement or make, um, does it feel like your motivation's coming back for the Rogue Invitational? Does it feel like it's it can be there? Motivation is there, but I think people need to realise as well, Arnold's to Worlds is about 12 weeks, 10 to 12 weeks, so that's the longest training press I've got in a whole year, so if you're training 10 to weeks, you're going to be going into a competition better than any other any, any competition season, because then after Worlds, it's every few weeks you've got competitions. I physically cannot keep that up. I'm one of those guys that can't keep up 100% records if I'm only doing three or four weeks. I should do that. I look at four. Four, there's three competitions, four competitions a year, and comes top two in every, or top three in every single competition because he needs to prep for them. Not Arnold's again. No, no. <laughs> that's his first competition back. So let's, Sorry, let's, take, let's, let's take that back. Like, let's, totally joking. But like, that's what you need to do. Like, and you know, I, I do try, but it's something that's hard to not get motivated when after one straw is man, you've done, you've achieved something you've always wanted to do. And then every few weeks you're expected to do competitions. You can't, you can't peak every single few weeks, but that's why if I'm, if I'm going Arnold's to Worlds, I've got the big, the longest period I've got of just training when, with focus. And that's why I'm so good at it. If I had that every other competition, I would be coming to every competition hundred percent, but I physically can't, but yeah, I'm motivated for, I'm motivated more now for all since I made that decision of Glasgow. If I had to do Glasgow, which is two weeks in, rolled two weeks after, there would be no chance I would have been doing uh, 
no chance I'd be not motivated. I would, like, <coughs> there'll be no chance I'd be able to probably do wrong. Like, it's not that I'm not motivated, it's just like the fatigue and just other things going on in my head. But yeah, I am. I think when people realize I get motivated for every single competition, I just get frustrated at why I'm not performing in comps and I just beat myself up about it, but thinking I'm weak. But obviously, there's a bigger issue than that, and this is a year that I'm. Do you, sorry, do you think it's like you're getting overstimulated a lot of the time? You know, because I see it, you know, you, you put a lot of effort into the competitions, but sometimes, you know, let's go back to Vegas. Like, Vegas is like, it's a mad place. I feel overstimulated. I'm not autistic. I don't have autism. But, like, for me, I was like, geez, I was walking back and forth from my room. It was mad. Like, I, I really struggled to G myself up. So do you think, and again, it's no excuses. It's just understanding your... Your mindset, your body, your your ability to to kind of come in so well for worlds, but then, like you say, it's maybe you don't have that time or whatever it is. Um, do you think maybe it's like uh, Vegas was my? I think Vegas is the worst one. I mean, like afterwards, well, I will hold a second, but shot again a mistake. I would have been third, but Vegas is the one I felt like. Yeah, I didn't want to be there. Like I, not saying it's bad, but I will never go back to Vegas to compete because. Like this casino was being locked in my room. It felt like World Stars Man the first year where I was locked in the room for two days. I can't, you can't do nothing. You literally, that, that still smoke when you're walking past it's one of my most uncomfortable places I've been. And then obviously not having the whole team there as well, it just made me feel, nah, this, this is all going to my head. And then the injury just topped it all off. It was just, yeah, it was hard, but like, I'm glad I experienced it once because now I can say like, I've done that. I have never. I I will never go back to Vegas. I, there's what me and Shay always want to go to Vegas. I'll never go back. There. I'm not even interested in one. Gear show across the West Coast, the Isle of Sky, nice and chilled. Neat. Basically, do like the grass, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. But I'll never. I don't think I can compete over there again. I just think it's, yeah, the, like the, the the casino life and all that kind of stuff. They like, you know, it's casinos are twenty four hour gyms open until six pm in the hotel. It's kind of like. The swimming pool says that that doesn't really work in very well. You need to you need the recovery. You can't really do anything else and just sit in a hotel. But anyway, that's Vegas is done and dusted. So done and dusted. We're moving on to the Rogue Invitational, which is going to be in about six weeks' time. So really excited. We've talked through the events. We've talked through Glasgow Giants Live, which I'm competing at. Oh. So we've got <laughs> we've got two two competitions in Scotland. <laughs> this is Scotland. This is our country. Come if you dare, leave when you must. Anyway, so, so the big one, Tom, the <laughs> big, big news today is you now have. I'll let you. What, what's the news? What's the news? What's the news? You say, so I'm going to look at my phone here because I I need to know the name. David Smith. You can't uh, so his name is uh, Paul Gascoigne. Um, so, yeah, so like I said earlier on, I need to work with Dr. Dean, who is. I, I don't know what his name is. He's like, does the, does all my blood checks and everything and just helps me out with like some specialist things when I need help with it. Um, So I reached out to him after video saying to him, like, do you know anyone that can help you with rehab, prehab and stuff? Because this, this injury thing I've got is really getting to me. And yeah, he gave me someone's number called, he's called Morpho Body Mechanic. His name is Aaron Kaisley and he's an injury rehab specialist and educator. 50,000 clients rebuilding power, blah, blah. And he's, his page is full of like, it's like the Squat University, just so much knowledge. And he's an osteopath as well. And he does all the, the scans and everything. So, yeah. Um, what? Osteo uh, yeah, yeah. Osteopath. Osteopath. And he does all the scans. Yeah, but... he, he does everything. So, it's basically like like you want, a, it's like a, you want a HQ under one roof. It's like he's he's a guy under one one uh, name. So, uh, yeah, basically I contacted him. I had a few messages back and forth without even sending videos and stuff. He said it sounded disc related, blah, 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 blah. And um, we've got an osteopath up here. Um, and he said, go go get him to test four or five different things. And he thinks it's, you know, he, he said, yeah, I think you'll fail. And I think it's something to do with your disc and nerves. And yeah, I failed the test miserably and uh, everything was weak and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's to do with my discs and nerves I don't yeah I don't know any really anything about it I just know that's what it's about so uh, yeah so now I'm going to be working with with him and uh yeah I've had a few calls and stuff with him and he's very very you know this is this is a thing as well for me it's trauma is now more of a professional sport and like Luke with his MST the change he did to MST like he knows everyone Shane lad 
Go on, mate. Uh, MST knows about uh, injuries and recoveries. You know, he it might not be. You know, he's not going to make. I uh, bet like the training's not going to be too much different, but it's more. If Luke injured himself now, he knows how to sort of it. If I injure myself, I don't know how to sort of it. And that's why I've had this injury for so long. But Dan, you know, Dan's a bit of a bit part of my team. He's got me so, so far. But, you know, I was just getting to the question now of, like, Dan, we can't, you know, you don't know how to fix this. The stretch, like, even since some of the stretch we're doing, Adam was saying they're making it 100 times worse. All the stuff I was doing, making it worse. We kept on just trying to deadlift, squat. And it was just making it worse, irritating it all. And I was just going home in pain and just getting more and more frustrated. You know, you could see even at Vegas, I couldn't get the bar close to my shins. My right side was loose. I couldn't get tight. The suit didn't feel like it was on or anything. So blah, blah. But anyway, I contacted this guy. And yeah, like the call I had with him was unbelievable. The stuff he was saying, I mean, you can see his page and see how knowledgeable he is. He's helped so many people. And um, so I'm going to go with this guy for the rest of this year. Um I'm going to help, I want him to help me coach as well for the Arnold, uh, not for the Arnold, for Rogue, and uh, that's why I said we're going to strip everything back, and he's going to be doing it, so it's like, you know, one day I'm going to be doing like a back orientated, then in the second day is going to be complete rest from the back stuff, so I'm not overloading my back, because with disc problems, that's the worst thing you can do, is keep on pounding it, keep on pounding it, and you end up being bed bound. Also as well, like the golf's a big part, because I'm swinging, it's on my right side, and you don't really realise it until you're actually doing that movement, so... You know, the way I swing it, I'm not a professional, so I'm probably swinging it totally wrong. So it's just about also as well proper recovery. I'm not done. I'm getting my, like, VO2 max. Like, that's all the cardio stuff as well. Like, you know, me playing football and golf, I thought was cardio, but it's not because after those two events in Vegas, I was totally destroyed. I thought I was dead. 10 events. I was, I've never felt so bad after a competition in my life. So, yeah. There's, I can't really say too much about it because obviously I've not seen everything, but I know that, Going forward, he's going to help me big time in the recovery centre things. Don't know about the training because I've not seen any of it, but I want, I need new eyes. And this is for me the biggest thing going forward is, you know, if I get injured again now and then I know what to do, if, you know, he's going to rebuild everything up from this bottom, he knows how to not train to aggravate the disc and stuff, you know, and he usually the thing like your, your, um, your nerves need mo mobility as well. Because you said, you know, mobility to most people is just going to the gym, stretching out their, um, like hips and stuff like that, but your mobility, your nerves need mobility. And I didn't know anything about that. And that, so it was all just kind of like mind blowing to me. Like, this is so easy to do. And I did a few exercises when I was talking to him for my nerves and it felt instantly better. And I was like, this is crazy. So yeah, he really does know what he's talking about. He's gone through disc pain before. He's gone through like brain traumas and stuff before as well. He's got clinics and leads. So this guy is like, yeah, he's, he's very, very good. So it's good to have him on board and, Let's see what happens, but I'm very, very excited. Like I said, it, I need the new changes. I've been saying it for... Uh, I know I've been... You know, Dan, like I said, I don't have any bad words to say about Dan. He's been unbelievable, but I think I just need that next step now, and this is the next step, I think, to um, help me from not just winning World Strong as Man, but for keeping me injury-free, for keeping me kind of, like, improving um, in the sport as well. So, yeah, you know, you'll see more and more of me talking about this guy and stuff, but go check out his page. More full body mechanic on uh, Instagram, and as soon as you see it, it's got like, you know, basically that's what Squat University does. There's a whole page you click on things, and it tells you how to do all these kind of stuff as well. And also, he's a coach, and he's got a really good strongman powerlifting clients as well. He's helped over fifty thousand people. Yeah, unbelievable. The information goes on, but very, very knowledgeable guy, and I'm very kind of happy that I was able to. Like I said, I need to do what's best for me. I've listened to a lot of. Like, you know, fans have listened to other people and said, like, oh, I'm too scared to do it because changes for me is scary. And uh, I've kind of just held back a lot and it's, it's really affected my career. I think I think I would, you know, I'm not saying my career has been bad, but I think it's really affected me in the last few months. And I really just need to step on it now and take responsibility and go, like, this is me. If if I go to Aaron and it works out, fine. If I go to Aaron and it doesn't work out, then that's, I hold my hands up. There's always different people out there. But yeah, that's my... Thing. So going to Rove, let's see what happens. It's Like I said, it's new to me. That's why I can't really predict too much stuff. But I know that if I go in there 100%, I'm going to put on a very good performance. But I'm very excited to be working with Aaron. And uh, yeah, it's going to be good things coming. So I think it's um, it's, it's a really brave decision for you because knowing you, obviously, all your life, um, change is one of the most difficult things for you. And, you know, it's really nice what you said about Dan. I said the same, you know, Dan, he got us to a level, <clears throat> and it's great. It was fantastic, and Dan's really good at that. But I think what you're saying is, you know, you've you've been with that same 
process for quite a while now and like a change is needed we can all see that and you know you need that knowledge base you need that little bit more finer tuning because it was someone said to me like your max your max strength can take you up to here but then what happens then if that starts to slow down you hit that plateau and you need to look at like the different skill sets the different like fine tuning and i think what what you've been saying is that's what Aaron can really kind of give you and i and i think yeah I'll take my invisible heart off to you um and say you know really proud of you for making that change and um doing that because i know it's not easy and you'll probably be quite over kind of stimulating and like worried and you know but just know that i'm here everyone that's part of the team want you to succeed and want you to be the best that that strong man that you can be and all the people i'm sure you guys watching just want tom to be the best you know you want to see that battle between you and mitch and thor and those great athletes and me nibbling at your heels if i can you know that's what we want to see and i think that is so commendable for you to be able to do that and you know um huge shout out to dan for for being such a support for you yeah dan's been good yeah he's, he understands it as well i mean he doesn't he has a set of skills which is coaching but he doesn't have the the other branch of skills which you know you, you fair, fair play for saying oh, i don't even do this that and stuff because you know that's he's that's what not that's not what he's like so yeah and that's you know Aaron helping me to make the decision for Glasgow as well you know he said in two weeks you're just going to make yourself even more battered and you're going to have no chance of doing well so you know it was that kind of help with him as well and understanding it and not just saying pull out your ass to tell me why and stuff like that as well so yeah it's going to be good and um yeah everything's going to be I need to get the recovery back even the diet as well you know it's I think the diet is a bit easier to change because like, it's just food, so I can say to Nathan, look, I don't want this, that, but we've changed a lot of other things as well, more healthier stuff, and, but like I said, you know, I, I, I do read comments and stuff as well, and it's, you know, it's just, you know, it gets to you as well when you, when you have a lot of people saying change coach, change this, change that, because at the end of the day, when you have someone for seven, eight years, it's like if you have a best friend for 14 years and you tell them, I don't want to be your friend anymore, what, what, what's, what's that, and, you know, Dan's more than the coach to me as well, and we've had, like, you know, I think we've been... I've been, he was Paul Smith coach when I was in the juniors and I've known him since then. So it's been a really good relationship we've had. And like I said, Dan respects what I do as well. I always, you know, I always respect Dan and it's just, you know, I don't like seeing the comments saying change coach changes. I don't like seeing any negative comments to people because Dan's done unbelievable stuff for the sport. Uh, he's talked highly off. We've done unbelievable stuff for the sport. You know, if me and Luke just said we're, we're retired tomorrow, you'll you'll miss us so it's kind of like just you know be nicer and just uh let us just keep doing what we're doing for britain because i think myself and luke are the two bit best in britain right now and britain's produced in a long long time and i think that me and luke uh stopped you know, i'm not talking bad but i think uh, britain would, wouldn't be in as good a place as the iron strongman right now if it wasn't for myself and luke 100 percent. so so we're trying our best that's all we can ask that's all you can ask of yourself if you're trying your best at something and there's things in the way that get in the way and stop you from giving your best, then that's life. That's what happens in life. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things, you get injuries. Sometimes personal life gets in the way. All these things happen. But no, we are really trying our best here. And again, I think, and I hope you guys see that, it's a huge change for Tom. Um, and it's a really brave change. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. And... Yeah, I'm really excited for the future. We've said, I've said 2024 is like a warm-up year for me in my terms of my new coaching. I think the rest of 2024 is going to be like a warm-up, a test. And then we're going to be coming in 2025 really fired up, really ready to go. We're going to work really hard in the off-season after Rogue and get back to, you know, we're coming back. The plan is a quick touch as well in 2025. Like I've been vocal about it. I'm not going to be doing more than four competitions. That's uh, that's 100% free. So like, if people are getting Giants live tickets for like Royal Alberta, etc., etc., just just so you know, just so it's out there, Tom Stoke will not be there. So I'm not going to be focusing on Giants live a lot next year. It's going to be focusing on Arnold's Rogue Short Classic Worlds. You'd be by my my back class, yeah. But like, that's just to let everyone. So that's five. So you said 100%. You're yeah, do four. Or love probably you. Probably back there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <I'm not gonna laughs> So I just, I don't just want people to, like, I just want to give people a notice because yeah. I know that well, Giants High keeps it last minute, a lot of athletes do, but I'm just telling you for the future so that if, you know, years are going to Britain Straw as mine 2025, I ain't going to compete with Britain Straw as mine. I'm doing what's best for me, so it's, yeah. So it's just to let you know, Big my first competition in 2025 is going to be the Arnold Classic in Ohio. 
I just want to make sure everybody aware. I want to have good quality time with Aaron to get myself in the best possible shape. And let's see what I can, what his coaching actually can do to me with, you know, uh, six months of coaching. And I just want to take that part of journals and see how good I can get within five months. So there we go. That's, that's an announcement as well for 2025. Big Tommy dropping some major news. I didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for being so open, Tom. I think that was great. Um, so cute. I think, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Stay, stay, smile and stay, please. And please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Bell.